Hare Krishna. This is 1966. Around March and April, Srila Prabhupada was conducting classes and meeting Dr. Mishra and addressing some of the students of Dr. Mishra. But Dr. Mishra had an impersonal idea and Srila Prabhupada would speak from the Vaishnava point of view. And there was a little bit of a discomfort for Dr. Mishra. So there was one person, young person, Paul Murray. He invited Swamiji if he can come to his loft in Lower Manhattan in a place called Bavri. Those days, Srila Prabhupada used to have a journal and he would keep track of various things that are happening on a day-to-day -day basis. So in one of those dairies, Prabhupada makes an entry that before he moved to Paul's place at Bowery, he conducts a program there and he writes that as an experiment, I'm conducting this program and the program went on well. And but not so many people, there were about eight or 10 people attending. But Prabhupada was happy because he had no obligations like with Dr. Mishra. He could speak freely to that audience. And so Srila Prabhupada is seriously considering moving to Lower Manhattan at 94 Bavri. So there are, if Prabhupada goes back and forth many times, stays overnight with Paul's, in Paul's loft. And Paul is a young, about 17, 18 year old American, young boy, taking to Krishna consciousness quite eagerly, wanting to hear from Prabhupada and understand Krishna consciousness. In fact, even Srila Prabhupada encouraged him and he said that I'll send you to India. And he even made, had some correspondence with Sindhya Shipping Company asking Sumati Morarji, now I have one student whom I want to take with me, send him to India. Can you all give him a free ticket? And somehow it got declined. So Paul was taking to Krishna consciousness quite seriously and Prabhupada was spending a lot of time with him. And then at a certain point of time, he tells Dr. Mishra that he's going to move over. And uh, Prabhupada comes to 94 Bhavri and this is a loft on the fourth floor. It is fourth floor from American standards. It's from Indian standards. It's on the third floor. Ground plus first, second, third. It was a big open space loft and Srila Prabhupada had made an arrangement to have a curtain and Prabhupada would sit behind the curtain and there was a wooden table and two chairs. One chair on which Prabhupada would sit and work. He had a typewriter. One of the students had given him a typewriter and so he was using that typewriter and he had the manuscript which was about one foot high sheets of paper and he would be preparing the manuscript typing his books and whenever there is somebody he would go and talk to them and they would come and sit and talk to him or he would there was this big hall open space where Prabhupada would conduct the 
kirtans, would conduct the bhajans and give classes. So it was, there was this kind of a privacy and uh, uh, Prabhupada liked it very much. This goes on for a few weeks, about two months. Young Americans are coming and they are hearing his classes. Actually, it was around that time Srila Prabhupada begins to contemplate on uh, incorporating the society. There was one young American, Carl, who would come and meet Srila Prabhupada. And uh, Carl was uh, half black, a young American, who lived with his wife, Eva, not very far from 94 Bavri. And uh, he had a contact with a lawyer. And so he offered to help Swamiji to incorporate the society. And at that time, uh, and he goes and brings that uh, lawyer. On 25th of March, the meeting happens. And uh, Srila Prabhupada had br has brought with him from India the incorporation papers of League of Devotees, which he had incorporated in Jansi many years ago. And for some reason, that League of Devotees could not go on and uh, there were many other uh, aspects to that. We will not go into that. But Prabhupada had carried. In fact, after Srila Prabhupada wound up League of Devotees activities in Jansi and moved to Vrindavan, he was all along contemplating about an international society. Much later, devotees discovered in one of the trunks that Prabhupada had few pages of the document, Memorandum of Association. And uh, in fact, this was typed in October of 1963. So two years before Srila Prabhupada embarked on the Jalatuta voyage. So in October of 1963, Srila Prabhupada had prepared this document it's very interesting. Even in 1963, Prabhupada was having all these aspirations. He called it the League of Devotees. And the second line, it says, incorporated in United States. Prabhupada is in London, is in Vrindavan. He has not gone to America. But he was already thinking that this should be incorporated in the United States. The name of the society is League of Devotees, Inc. I don't know how Srila Prabhupada had figured out ink. You know, that's a practice not in India. And then it says, the registered office of the society is situated at Washington, USA, or at New York, USA. So we can see how Srila Prabhupada had, even in 1963, October, in Radha Damodar temple, typing this on his typewriter but envisioning that this society will get incorporated in America. So when uh, this lawyer, Goldsmith, comes and meets uh, Swamiji, he gives him some of these documents which has the objectives of the society, rules and regulations and all of those kind of things. And then he takes that and then he puts it in, he understands that and in a way that is suitable for uh, according to American laws. And he prepares the documents. And once Prabhupada goes to meet the lawyer in his office, and a few of these kind of interactions are happening between the lawyer, and then according to American law, they had to put a board in front of the office for 15 days to see if there is anybody, anyone objecting to it or whatever the law legal procedure was. So all of this was happening in 94 Bavri. And this uh, sign was put up 
And the lawyer said that this should be there publicly seen for 15 days and after that we will be ready to incorporate. And although Paul was showing a lot of interest in Krishna consciousness, but he could not give up his addiction to drugs. Very often he would be drugged and Prabhupada had to tolerate that. And uh, Prabhupada had grand plans and Paul would respond to some extent. Prabhupada was thinking that we should get, we should convert. This is a big loft. This is very suitable for a temple. We should get Radha Krishna deities from Jaipur or Vrindavan. He talked about all of that. And Paul was very interested to know that Swamiji has these ideas. And so the idea was that Prabhupada's plan was to establish the temple there in the loft on the fourth floor. 94 Bavri. But very often, Paul, although submissive to Prabhupada, when Prabhupada was, would give class, sometimes he would ask for water, Paul would very, very faithfully go behind, bring a glass of water, give it to Swamiji, and Prabhupada would drink, and then it, he would pick up the glass. So he was quite, sub, quite subservient, like a good student. But at the same time, he had this problem with drugs. And, uh, you know, when you are living very closely with another Prabhupada, an elderly person, uh, very experienced, seen different things in life, pure devotee, and here there is a 17, 18 year old American. And uh, there were occasions where things were not very pleasant. Prabhupada would point out some mistakes and he would become a little annoyed. Prabhupada would often, because they, were, they had a common bathroom and they had to share. And Prabhupada was very concerned that the soap should not be left on the floor. Because Prabhupada, after all, is an elderly person. Imagine he goes to the washroom and there is a soap on the floor and he steps on it. He can slip and it can be, it can, there, there can be an accident. So Prabhupada would talk about that, but invariably Paul would leave the soap on the floor. You know, small things like that. And Prabhupada was somehow tolerating. And then one day, Paul had taken a, an overdose of those drugs and it was about, actually it, ha it happens a few times and Prabhupada records that in, the, in his diary. One night at 10 o'clock, Prabhupada was still typing and Paul became very annoyed and uh, he got into an argument and Prabhupada said, all right, I will not type. And he stopped typing. And it was not a very pleasant experience. Prabhupada does not elaborate on that, what exactly happened. He just writes that an incident extraordinary happened last night at 10 o'clock. And uh, Paul became angry and upset. And then the next day, some of the young devotees who are coming, one of them importantly was Karl. Karl later on becomes Karla Patidas, an initiated devotee. Swamiji tells Karl about that, that this kind of an experience I had the previous night. And Prabhupada writes that also in the diary. I shared this with Karl. And so Carl hears that one and then he says that yes, somehow things are not going on very well with Srila Prabhupada, with Swamiji and Paul. And then one day in the morning, Prabhupada is there, Paul is there in the, in the loft, Prabhupada is doing his work on the, at the table and Paul, under the effect of the truck, 
he starts mourning and walking up and down in the loft and then he becomes he begins to walk very very quickly and that moaning becomes louder and louder and Swamiji is wondering what is happening to him and he starts running up and down and he's shouting and screaming so Prabhupada is watching all this and then he's speaking incoherently loudly and then he goes up and down running and then he comes and stares at Srila Prabhupada so Prabhupada asks him yes what happened calm, calm down calm down but Paul is not in his senses he is angry and he is screaming shouting angry at Prabhupada in that kind of a state so Srila Prabhupada realizes that you know this man has gone crazy and he can probably do some harm to him so Prabhupada slowly rises from his chair walks to the door and Paul is still screaming shouting running and doing all of that slowly he close opens the door closes and comes down he's back down in the street in Manhattan and he's thinking now what to do this last few days of build up of that some annoying not very pleasant relationship with Paul had finally ended up in this kind of a situation and Prabhupada began to think what to do next all his belongings are up there and this man is it's not at all safe for an frail elderly uh, person sannyasi like Srila Prabhupada to be in the company of a young American with full of energy and going crazy with drugs and then he goes to a nearby telephone booth and calls Carl and Carl comes to know that already Carl is aware that this kind of a relationship is developing between Paul and Swamiji and uh, Carl was very nice and he says Swamiji please come over to my house it was just five blocks away and Carl comes and takes Prabhupada to his house and invites him to his house and but he also has a loft and he has a loft and he has a room it's like a studio probably with or a, a big hall living space with one bedroom and he lives with his wife Eva so Carl is there and then but Carl also has cats and dogs in his house and his wife who is not all that inspired about Krishna consciousness now but somehow they accommodate understanding Swamiji's situation and he agrees to and in the living room Prabhupada is given a certain corner and he begins to live there and Carl goes to Paul's loft once again brings all the different things and now he is now Swamiji is now staying with Carl and Carl is very interested in Krishna consciousness and he has long hours of conversations with Swamiji and Prabhupada is spending a lot of time with Carl explaining different aspects of Krishna consciousness and that discussion about incorporating the society is continuing but Carl's wife is not very comfortable Swamiji as it is his plan now he has informed some of the followers who are coming to him in the loft in 94 Bavari to come to Center Street in Carl's house and the programs would be happening there and Carl's wife was not very comfortable she was a white American woman and she was not comfortable having all of these visitors coming and what's happened to our privacy we had our nice life and all of a sudden Swamiji has come and he has appropriated our whole home 
and it's his work now going on and his programs are going on, Kirtans are going on and Carl is spending a lot of time. She's very uncomfortable and Prabhupada begins to sense that discomfort Carl and his wife are having because of him staying as a guest in their house. You can see these kind of things. Prabhupada would later on also recollect that how he was going from one place to another place, not clear, not having any certainty where he would be. Prabhupada, a highly respected gentleman, a sannyasi in back home in Vrindavan, all the, all the different religious organizations recognize Prabhupada as a very, a very uh, realized, very scholarly, very sincere, a great saintly devotee, a sannyasi, respected sannyasi. But here Prabhupada is in Manhattan uh, in this kind of a situation where the host does not want him to be, not very comfortable to have him. So one morning at 7 a.m., Carl and Srila Prabhupada take a walk. And then they're obviously, they must be talking about locating another place. And there was another person who was constantly visiting the, temp the gatherings and meetings with uh, Swamiji was Mike. Mike is one who becomes Mukunda later on. So they think about going to Mike, Mike's house, and Carl calls from a public phone, and it's 7 a.m. in the morning. And those days, Mike had a job, a late night job, as a singer and composer of a music in a nightclub. So he had just come back from his work about 5 a.m. and slept. And two hours later, he gets this phone call and just wakes up from his sleep and takes the phone call and Carl says, um, um, Mike, I'm Carl here. I want to come and see you. Then Mike says, what? You know, I just slept. It's too early. Do you want to really see me now? And then Carl says, yes, I want to see you. And I'm with the Swami. Oh my God. Carl and Swami looks like some kind of an emergency. It's so early in the morning. So he jumps out of the bed and then he says, okay, give me, give me a few minutes to get ready and to receive. And he just jumps out of the bed and uh, Janaki, at that time, she's not initiated. Jan, she was still, she was also sleeping. And who's this early morning at 7 a.m. Somebody is coming to the house and disturbing. You know, you can imagine that in America at such early hours, somebody disturbs you. People really get annoyed. It's not done, especially to go to somebody's house. And uh, so Mike is just getting ready to go, get ready to receive, and already the doorbell rings. So he goes and opens the door and uh, lets him, and Carl is there, Swami is there. And then, hi Swami, in those days, they didn't know they have to pay obeisance, they have to say Hare Krishna, none of those things. They, they would say, hi Swami. And uh, they he invited him, to sit inside and on the in the living room on the sofa and Swamiji sat there and Carl was there and Mike and uh, Carl began to explain that that how things have not been going on very nicely with between Paul and Swamiji and Paul has been going crazy uh, the last few days and last few weeks especially and so he needs an alternate place. So then Mike begins to understand that uh, he needs another place and then he's looking for, and then Mike begins to think that it looks like now Swamiji wants my house. <laughs> and uh, what will happen, you know? And then Mike starts giving excuses. Swamiji, yeah. Uh, even Carl asks, how long you have been in this, in this place? And he says, last one year I've been here. 
and uh, and Swamiji has brought one suitcase, holding a suitcase in his hand, and he's come into the house. And so he's looked at the suitcase and he's thinking, oh, now he's trying to put all things together. Now what's going to happen? Swami is going to now appropriate into my house. And uh, so he says that, uh, you know, Swamiji, there are a lot of musicians come here and we keep practicing, we keep singing drummers and, and with guitar and a lot of loud music happens here. Maybe this is not really the right place. And uh, if you give me a few days, I'll find a place. And I have some experience in finding a place. And then so he says that uh, I can find a place for Swamiji. So Carl understands that uh, this is not really the very best of the situation for even for Swamiji. And while this conversation is going on, Jan comes and uh, she has brought, so she has cut some oranges and comes and he says, Hi Swami, uh, it was very nice. You had offered that uh, feast last time. Uh, I had come there and it was very nice. Oh, and then Swamiji looks up and says, Oh, uh, are you uh, Mike's wife? And she's shocked a little bit. Wife? <laughs> no, no, we just live together here. Yeah. And then um, there is a flash of disapproval on Srila Prabhupada's face. You can imagine what's going on? What is this? He's just getting introduced to the uh, American way of life. <clears throat> and then, uh, and of course, but he's absorbed in many other things now that, that flash of disapproval on his face dissolves into discussion of other things. And then she comes and gives the fruits for Srila Prabhupada for Swamiji to uh, honor, to accept. Uh, and then they talk about this for a while and then Carl says, okay, I'll have Swamiji in my house for some more time till you, while you find the, another place for Swamiji. And so with that, they close and Swamiji rises. He picks up his suitcase and Carl and Swami walk out of the house. And Mike is watching. Oh my God. And he feels guilty that he could not accommodate. And he remembers that Prabhupada walking away, carrying a suitcase. I think this is one of the very, very uh, significant moments uh, of Srila Prabhupada in the early days in New York. Uh, not having a proper residence. And... Uh, carrying his suitcase and at early in the morning at 7 a.m. moving around and in the house of somebody who's not very comfortable to have him going through all these kind of situations. So Mike looks up in the local newspapers and identifies one place and then he calls up Carl and says that I've spoken to the landlord. There is one place not very far from uh, where they are and uh, if they could come and look up the place. And that is, and he gives him the address and then they decide to come and see the place. So Swamiji and Carl walk to this place and Mike has already gone to that place, 26 Second Avenue and the landlord is there and uh, Mike begins to explain to him that this uh, Swamiji, he's an Indian Swami. He wants to conduct classes and he wants to, he has, he's the author of a few books and he has met the Prime Minister of India and his, the Prime Minister of India has appreciated his books. And he's given him, giving him an introduction of Swamiji. And they're talking for a few minutes and then outside the building, outside the storefront. And in a few minutes, Karl and Swamiji comes and they shake hands. And Mike introduces Swami. And then the landlord says, can we see the place? And they open the door. He has a big key bunch and unlocks and opens the door. And they see it's an empty, opens, open storefront. And there was a, a some kind of a gift store. And so on the glass, it had big lettering, matchless gifts. And... Uh, 
the big hall and then it was just bare hall, wooden floor, white walls and here and there there was patches and then the landlord said that uh, I'd get this painted. And uh, the advantage Mike saw was that this is right on the ground floor and opening into the street so that more people can come. Unlike 94 Bowery, which was on the fourth floor and one had to go up to the fourth floor and not so accessible, not so visible to public. So Mike thought that this was a, uh, uh, that these were, this was an advantage. And Swamiji saw that one and he also instantly said that, yes, this is a good place. And then uh, uh, the next question was, Carl asked, what is the rent for this place? So the landlord says the rent is uh, $100 a month. So Swamiji looks at uh, him and he says, uh, these two, Mike and Carl, they are members of my society and they pay a monthly fee of $21 and I want you also to become a member of my society. Mike is thinking, what? Society? Member? I'm not any member. But then he's thinking, okay, Swamiji is actually you know, talking about something and then he lets Swamiji do the talk. And then Swamiji has brought the three books, the Bhagavata. He opens from his back and he hands over the books and says, I want you also to become a member and pay a $21 and so and you don't have to pay anything actually you become a member these books are for you and we will deduct that $21 from the monthly rent that we have to pay and so already the landlord is you know he's just met Swami elderly person in saffron robes come from India scholar author of books and he's hearing about all these things and he's sort of taken aback and then uh, 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 he's sort of, you know, he didn't have much to say and he's sort of accepting the offer very graciously. And then he looks at the book and then he looks at the, turns the pages. It must have taken quite a lot of effort to make, write these books. And Swamiji is nodding and he's saying, yes. And then the landlord says, there is one apartment behind. If you are interested, I can show you that. Carl says, yes, can we see that? And then they go out through the back door and come to the courtyard there. And then they walk up the step on the first floor. <clears throat> there is a, a apartment with two rooms and uh, Carl and Swamiji and all of them, they see. And then they ask, how much is the rent? And they say $85 for that. So 100 for that. 100 has now become 79 and, an eight, and 85 here. And so Carl and Mike look at each other and say, between two of us, I think we should find a way. And the landlord says, there's no uh, deposit for this. And I'm happy to give this away without deposit. So they agree on to the whole thing. And uh, he says, I'll get this painted. And uh, so they walk out and the deal is made. And on July 1st, Swamiji gets possession of the storefront and the apartment and from center uh, street all of a few of his followers they carry different things somebody is carrying the typewriter somebody is carrying the dictaphone somebody is carrying the big suitcases somebody is carrying a trunk full of books of Swamiji and Swamiji is also carrying a trunk and all of them walk from that place come to second avenue and they bring all the different things into the room and take it to the apartment. And on 1st of July, the, uh, the Srila Prabhupada occupies this place and very soon starts conducting. This is a big hall and open to the street. A lot of people can come. It is more accessible, more visible, much better than 94 Bavri. And so Prabhupada starts conducting and then between the lawyer and Swamiji, that discussion is still going on. And then in one of those discussions, uh, when Swamiji uh, suggests the name that this will be known as International Society for Krishna Consciousness. The lawyer says that um, 
maybe you should call it uh, International Society for God Consciousness because nobody knows Krishna in America. So uh, Swamiji says, no, uh, God Consciousness is a very vague term and this should be known as Krishna Consciousness and this society will make Krishna known all over the world. If people don't know who is Krishna, this society will make Krishna known all over the world. That was the kind of reasoning that Prabhupada had, that God consciousness is a very vague word. And he used the word Krishna consciousness. And in fact, the word Krishna consciousness was also coined by Srila Prabhupada, which later on he would say that he drew that on the basis of one expression that Rupa Goswami had used in one of his works. Krishna Bhakti Rasa Bhavita Matihi. Uh, matihi means consciousness. Consciousness Bhavita means imbued with. And consciousness which is imbued with Krishna Bhakti Rasa. Uh, so that's how Prabhupada had coined that word Krishna consciousness. And he wanted this to be a society of Krishna consciousness for devotees to come together who are practicing. And as per the vision of, uh, uh, of uh, his spiritual instruction of his spiritual master and as per the prophecy of, of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, this has to be an international society. And that's how the name International Society for Krishna Consciousness came up. And so one morning on 13th of July, Srila Prabhupada is speaking, early morning, 7 a.m. lecture, and there are a few young followers and then he has the he's talking and the lawyer comes there with the papers and he comes into the at the back of the room when the cl class is happening and Prabhupada is sitting at the far end and addressing a few devotees who are sitting in front of him and the door is at the far end the door opens and the lawyer comes in he takes off his shoes and he is sitting on a ledge there and waiting for the class to get over. And then at the end of the class, uh, Prabhupada invites. So here we have the lawyer, uh, so and so, please come forward. And uh, as you all know, we are going to start this uh, society. And he has brought the papers. And I want some of you to sign and give your name. Mike, can you give your name? And, and all of them, they are all young uh, followers and they want to help Swamiji. And if Swamiji, you know, if they can help by signing a document and help Swamiji incorporate a society. Those days, the thinking among them was that if you have the society incorporated as a non-profit, you will get some benefits, some, you can collect some donations and you may get some tax exemptions and those kind of things. So that is the reason why Swamiji, actually Swamiji has a big vision. What is his vision to create a worldwide society of Krishna consciousness? They all could not comprehend. They thought it is to get some tax exemption or to collect some donation. And Swamiji wants some help and we will help him. We will, he will put our signature. So the papers are distributed among a few of them. They all sign and they become uh, members of the society. And then the lawyer takes those things and then gets the thing incorporated and that is how the International Society for Krishna Consciousness was founded and this happened on 13th of July 1966 at 26 2nd Avenue, New York and that was the first formal temple. It was Prabhupada's own place now. He was not sharing with somebody and so he was freely able to conduct he had that apartment behind, so he would spend time there typing and he would come down and have classes and the kirtans would happen. This was an ideal situation. And now you see on July 1st, the Srila Prabhupada took possession of 26 Second Avenue and 13th of July, 13 days from the day of, of taking the possession, this society was incorporated. And after that, many, many more temples began to happen, expand. And now we have the wonderful movement that Srila Prabhupada created, International Society for Krishna Consciousness. Hare Krishna.